do get in here and join us. Hey, it's Erin from Stateline Kids. I'm here doing the stay at home live show with you tonight because I really just wanted to connect with you guys and see how everybody's doing, how things are going, and just share some ideas and some suggestions for how we can get through this together and sort of figure out uh, how to do this as we go along. Hi, Shannon. Um, so, we have all survived at least most of one week of e-learning slash homeschooling now. So I know some people had their week last week, depending on your school district, and are on spring break this week. Other people had spring break last week and are now trying the e-learning for the first time. So what is your take on it? What do you, how do you think it went? Um, I have two kids. I have a five-year-old who's in kindergarten this year and a two-year-old. And so I really only had to manage the e-learning for one child, which I'm sure is much easier than if you have multiple children doing this. Um, and I did find, you know, some things were helpful for me as I was going along with it. So the first thing that was really helpful is for me to have a schedule. Um, I'm definitely a schedule person. I like to have a schedule, even if I don't follow the schedule just to have a piece of paper that I'm looking at and seeing, oh yeah, I should be doing this right now. Okay, you know, maybe I'm not, or maybe I can do it later, but it just is more comforting to have the schedule um, in place when I start out. So initially I saw that COVID-19 daily schedule is going around and I did think that was a really good schedule. Um, for a kindergartner, I felt like it was maybe a little much and it was pretty, pretty scheduled through the whole day all the way till I think 8 or 9 p.m. So I thought that was maybe a little much. So I did my own schedule, which basically was just like a block schedule in which we do a different thing each hour or so. That just sort of keeps me on track for how the day should go. Um, that way is, you know, we're waking up and having breakfast. We're not starting school stuff till like nine. And then typically I started each day by going outside. And that would be my second tip. I went outside with the kids basically every day that we've been under the stay-at-home order. And I do really think that that helps in terms of getting their energy out. It's a good mood booster. It keeps me uh, in a happier state to go outside and spend some time outdoors, especially on the few days that it was really nice out. And I just think that it helps sort of break up the day. So those two things I would suggest, as well as I would suggest trying to make each day a little bit special. Now, I'm not saying you have to do a crazy craft or some elaborate thing. I just think that kids are pretty easy to please with this kind of stuff. So if you can just make things a little special each day, whether it's looking into what day, uh, these national days of the month, it'll be like hot dog day or funny socks day or something that you could celebrate at home and say, hey, we're gonna do this today and they have something to be excited about, but it's not a ton of effort on your part because the e-learning is already a lot of work. And, you know, we're not trying to make a ton more work for the parents when you're already going through all this work together. And I should note here too, if you're just kind of barely hanging on getting through the e-learning, please do not feel like you need to be the mom going on Pinterest and looking at all this different stuff and making special extra things because sometimes you're just hanging on and you gotta just get through the days and there's nothing wrong with that and everybody feels that way sometimes and just you know power through to the evening, have your wine. Mine's in my favorite best dad ever mug. 
<laughs> but you know, enjoy your evening and then try again in the next day. That's all you can really do. So for example, one of the things that I was doing this week for my kids that's a special thing, which was pretty low effort, is I've been collecting for like a week or two all of our paper towel and toilet paper rolls. And I saw this fun craft that was bunny um, stamps where you sort of like hook three together and you bend them kind of, and then you can stamp something fun. So something Eastery that they'll be excited to do, but it's not a ton of work. So how is the e-learning going for you guys? Were you able to complete each day in a reasonable amount of time? I see Shannon saying, we didn't finish the week worth of e-learning. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. I mean, it definitely is a lot of work. And especially when your kids aren't used to sitting down at home and doing that big of a stretch of work. I know my daughter was a little difficult to convince that like she needed to do this at home because she's used to doing maybe 10 to 15 minutes of a worksheet at night, not you know two to three hours of stuff during the day. So it's definitely an adjustment to try to see you know, how it goes and work on it with your kids. But I hope that it's going well for you and that it continues to get better as we don't really know how long school will be out. And, you know, it's there's a potential this could be the rest of the school year for us. So, you know, you just got to do your best and just get through it while this year's happening. Ah, yes, potty training the toddler and having two older kids at different levels was sometimes too much. Yes, I am also potty training my two-year-old right now. And a lot of accidents happened while school was in session because he would be running around and I wasn't paying as much attention to him. And yeah, he did a couple poops like right in front of the toilet, which I was like, oh, good job, buddy, but still kind of gross, but all right. But yeah, it's it's definitely hard when you have the differing ages. My two-year-old is not thrilled with the five-year-old doing e-learning. He wants to play with her. He wants to sit on her lap. He wants to you know, run around with her. So that was kind of an adjustment to trying to figure out how to entertain him off to the side while helping her with her stuff. And so we're still definitely figuring that out over here too. It's a, it's a lot to pay attention to. It's a lot. It's a lot, especially if you don't have, I have no teaching background um, at all. So it's, it's a little bit tough for sure. Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is how are you keeping your kids entertained when they're home here? Um, I guess outside of the e-learning time, what types of stuff are you doing? And please, if you have anything that you would like to add, please type in the comments and share. I would have a co-host and make this more fun, but Stateline Kids is just me. So I'm the only, per I'm the only person here to, to chat. I'm the whole thing. If you've ever interacted with Stateline Kids, you were talking to me, Erin. It's just me. But yes, please share your comments. I'd love to interact with you while this is going on. Okay, Allie says, my son is struggling, not pushing the e-learning, doing work mixed with electronic learning games like Adventure, Ac Adventure Academy through ABC Mouse. You know, I think that's totally great and all right, though, because a lot of those games are, they are learning. I mean, they're they're screens, but they're learning different things and they incorporate math or reading or all kinds of stuff. And I'm really impressed with a lot of those games. They're not the 80s, you know, video games that I grew up on that were just, you know, a little guy jumping and you're not really learning anything. They're they're really, you know, educational, I think. So it's kind of like whatever you can get to get the get your kid interested and get your kid doing it, even if you need to break it up with the games, that helps. Um, my daughter really likes to do dance parties and particularly right now play the Zombies soundtrack, the Disney movie. So we'll do little breaks of dancing to Zombies or whatever music she wants in the living room while between uh, different little worksheets or whatever to tr sort of mix it up, keep her um, entertained and keep her on track. Otherwise, she just won't have the attention span for it. 
Hello, Orlando. How are you? Shelby says that they have made a bag, one for educational fun and another that's activities. And her daughter draws one out each day and it motivates her that she could do this one fun thing and this other thing after schoolwork's done. Yes, that's really cute. I have seen some people doing, including Shelby, some really cute things like a beach day she did um, and just sort of mixing it up with fun stuff at home that's themed. So if your kid gets excited about those kinds of activities and things, I think that's super helpful and awesome to do. And if you're the kind of mom that likes to plan a party and you know, make uh, cute displays and stuff, then that totally can, you know, uh, allow you to do that while we can't have parties right now. But at least you can take pictures and put them on Facebook and I'll like them and think they're cute, at least. <laughs> um, Mandy says they did a lot of playing in the yard the last couple of days since it's gonna be rainy. Yes, yeah, so did we, we were outside a lot. And I do think that helped too. And I don't know if that helped with your kids as well, but I feel like any amount we can go outside they really have a better attention when they come back inside. Allie says, nature walks, happy heart hunt through the neighborhood, went to Bauman Park today and we will be researching ducks tomorrow. Oh, that's fun. Yes, Bauman Park is so nice. I love that park, it's in Cherry Valley. Um, yes, and then happy heart hunt. That was one thing I was gonna list as an idea if you wanna get involved in an activity with your kids. You can. Oh yeah, you can see, well, I gotta point that way. This way, there we go. You can see the hearts on my window. My kids made some hearts for our doors and our windows. Um, that's a fun thing to do. It was actually started by a teacher in Janesville, so somewhat local. And basically you just cut out any kind of heart you want, any size. You can color it, have your kids color it, and then you put it on your door or put it in your windows. So then people can do a happy heart hunt and walk around your neighborhood and see all the different hearts on people's houses. And I have seen some super cute stuff if you guys join that happy heart hunt Facebook group. Some people have really creative things or they use their um, Cricut and print out really cute little design things and put them up. So that's really fun because it looks like there's some really, really cool ones. Even in our area, I've seen a lot of people saying they're from Loves Park or Rockton or I think I saw a Beloit one that was really cool. Uh, so if you're driving around the area, you may see some very cool ones. Um, same thing with chalking your driveway. Um, this weekend, I, I had the event to chalk, chalk your walk 815. And I would like to continue doing that for as long as anyone wants to do it and see people's pictures if you wanna post them in the new event and just chalk your walk with any inspirational message, anything that would make somebody happy if they went past. And then you take a walk through your neighborhood and see you know, what other people have written. And you know, hopefully it's a mood booster. For me, I'm kind of a crier. So I actually read some of them and would start crying because I thought they were really sweet. So you know, maybe you'll cry, maybe you won't, but it definitely is a nice thing to walk around and see because it makes you feel like uh, you're part of the community and everybody's not just shut in their house and ignoring each other. They are kind of doing, everyone's doing, you know, things in their homes, but are still connected as a community. So it's, it's really, it's very sweet. It was really nice. Let's see what other suggestions people have. Ah, oh, setting up kids messenger. Yes, that's a great suggestion. So if you have kids that want to chat with other kids, Facebook has a great thing called kids messenger so if they have the you know if they can type or text in the phone they could text their friends or family or whomever and you know share little smileys whatever they want um through the facebook messenger app for kids so that's a fun thing to do also you know if you have facetime if you have um an alexa device and you can call other alexa devices those kinds of things are really helpful to, to, to sort of break up the day and just to keep your kids and yourself, you know, feeling connected to other people. I know that um, we call our grand, my in-laws are in Lombard. And so my kids call them pretty much every day to just see how they're doing, chat with them, look at their cat. <laughs> they have a cat that will kind of walk in front of the screen for 10 minutes at a time and they'll just watch the cat just fascinated. So yeah, those types of things are fun and keeps everybody feeling connected. And then you don't feel so alone when you're, you know, in the stay at home order. 
And that's part of why I wanted to have this um, Facebook Live too, is just to connect with other parents who maybe you're feeling alone. And I've pretty much been in my house this entire time. I'm walking around my neighborhood, of course, but you know, it can be a little lonely and it's nice to chat with each other and share ideas. Shelby says she loves a good party. I know I've been to your parties. They're really good. Amber says we have been outside a lot taking walks. Today we made a chore jar with popsicle sticks. I figured they're home more so they could pick one chore a day to help out. Amber, that is super smart. I need to get on your wavelength because I, for some reason, I cannot get my kids, well, the five-year-old, she will literally just be like, well, you can do that, mommy. And I'm like, oh boy, I kind of, I got to get that curbed because I need to come up with some kind of chore system. I don't have a good chore system over here. So I end up doing everything, which is not, not very fun, as you know. So we'll have to look into that. But that's a great idea. I love that idea. Natty says, I've noticed mine do much better in the morning. So we do school right after breakfast. That way the afternoon has been for playing outside or whatever they decided to do. That's a great idea too. Yeah, if you can get them to focus on one block in the morning, I think that's super useful. And then you can say, hey, you're done. The day's free. Like, let's go nuts. That's That's great. I think that's a really good method to try if you're trying to do it through the day and it's not really working, then maybe give that morning method a try and see if you just do it in the morning, if they will, you know, react more positively and do their work, you know, a little more thoroughly or just get things done without as much, you know, complaint or whatnot. Um, we're currently doing kind of a broken up schedule throughout the day, but we're done at about two. So I was trying to sort of adhere to when she was in school normally, but not doing schoolwork that entire time, going outside for like an hour, doing an art or craft thing for like an hour and doing some kind of indoor playing or exercise or whatever for an hour or two. So, you know, you try the different things. We're, we'll probably have plenty of time to figure out what works and what doesn't and, you know, keep testing it out and seeing how it goes. Ah, oh, another thing to do is doing a scavenger hunt in your neighborhood or indoors. So if it's like gross outside, you could do an indoor scavenger hunt and make one with things like find a toy with, you know, blue wheels, find a red block, find a pencil, find a empty toilet paper roll, find whatever you want, and then make a, you know, a little sheet for them to check off. Or, you know what, I'll probably make one because I already made an outdoor one. So that'll be, I'll put that on my list. And then you can walk around your house and find stuff. And then please go outside and do that neighborhood scavenger hunt that I have on Stateline Kids. Um, I'll post it on the, in the comments when I'm done. But there's a bunch of fun stuff to find. Um, my daughter had a pretty hard time finding a lot of it because there were multiple numbers of things you had to find. So you had to get like three dogs, an open garage, um, American flag. So it took a while and she had a blast. She was really excited about it and, you know, pointing at different things. And usually I think she doesn't really notice what we're walking past as we walk past it. So it was kind of a nice way to sort of build awareness of like, oh, this is what's in your neighborhood. You know, these are the houses, look at these different things. And it was really fun. I had a good time too, uh, taking the walk with her and doing it. It was cool. Okay. Oh, and then one more thing is this bear hunt. So I've seen this on a few different places and I'm not totally sure how many uh, state line area families are participating because I keep seeing it shared in like bigger groups. Um, but the idea of the bear hunt is that you take a teddy bear. I'm assuming you could probably take like a, a cut out a picture of a bear too and you put it in your window and then you go on a bear hunt around your neighborhood and look for all the bears that you can find in the different windows. And there's a book called Bear Hunt that you could read with it if you wanted to sort of make it like a little lesson or work it into your e-learning. That would be pretty fun. So that sounds like a fun thing. We'll probably try to do that this week. We haven't done that yet. Okay, let me see what we've got for some comments. Okay. Allie says, Amazon has kids PE will be trying on bad weather days. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know about that one. I know there's a PE teacher on YouTube. I want to say his name's Jim, but that 
I'll, I'll look for it and put it in the comments. He was pretty fun. He's like, uh, does kids PE routines. We've also used Go Noodle. That's pretty fun. And Cosmic Kids Yoga. Those are both pretty fun. The kids like moving around and doing those. Go Noodle's got some crazy jumping and kicking and I tried to keep up. I could not. So <laughs> it definitely wears them out. Yep, Natty, we're FaceTiming relatives too. Yeah, totally. Allie, your kids pick chore sticks to earn Nintendo Switch minutes. Oh, that's smart. We have not ventured yet into the Nintendo Switch area. We have a Wii that rarely gets played, but that is smart. I I could do it for tablet time though. I, I could definitely work that in my schedule. Amber says, we put a disco ball in the bathroom and our Hey Google played music and my eight year old out on her swimsuit and had a pool party with her Barbies. Oh, that's so fun. <laughs> That's so fun. I love that idea. That's really cute. Uh, that Yeah, that sounds like a really good time. So you have like a little pool disco party in your bathroom. That's, that is fun. That's really fun. I like that idea a lot. Allie says, Jack Hartman has a ton of good educational videos for younger kids on YouTube. Oh, cool. I will check him out. I've not heard of him. Awesome. Ginger says, my kids have been doing iReady, Moby, Max, ABC Mouse, 11 year old is learning Spanish with Duolingo and learning states and capitals. The younger ones have enjoyed virtual field trips, flying kites, chalk obstacle course, chalk the walk. Heart hunt, bear hunt, neighborhood scavenger hunt, watch the neighbor shoot off a rocket. Whoa, cool, that's a cool neighbor. Baking, laundry, helping with meal prep and new meals. Trying to work on teaching my seven year old cursive. Mine have enjoyed a few meals from the school district as well. That's awesome, Ginger, you're doing, you sound like you're doing an incredible job. You're, you are super mom over here. You're doing a ton of stuff. That's awesome. The Spanish with Duolingo is a really good idea. That's really cool to add something fun in there and something educational. Maybe they wouldn't, I, I don't know, would they be doing that at school normally? Um, if not, that's really cool. And I love that you have a neighbor that shoots off rockets. That's really fun. <laughs> That's really fun. My, my neighborhood is kind of full of old people, so nothing exciting is going on over here. And I like the idea of teaching cursive. I would love to do that, but I feel like I need to teach myself cursive again before I try to teach somebody else because my cursive is a hot mess. It's like one cursive letter and then I print and then one cursive. So I know, I, I know I'm not, would not be able to teach it right now. I'd have to learn how to do it again. Oh, and that's awesome that you're taking advantage of the school district meals. I have actually heard that there's not a lot of people utilizing those. So if you do need a meal or whatnot, almost every school district, I believe every school district is doing it. I have a post on Stateline Kids about where you can grab a meal. Um, all the different ones are doing it and the YMCA of Rock River Valley is doing it. And there's a few other food banks and Miss Carly's that also hand out any kind of sandwiches during the day. So if you need anything, please check out that resource because there is a lot of support in the Rockford and Stateline area if you should need any kind of food during this break. All right. So the next thing, so far as our highlight, <laughs> yeah, that would be my highlight of social distancing too. That's fun. That's a, that's like a, uh, party in your bathroom. I love that. <laughs> That's really fun. Okay, let's see what my next thing is. Ah, Oh, yes, puzzles. Oh, I had some more ideas for activities to do. If you have puzzles and games, I don't know about you guys, but I have stuff in the back of the closet that my kids probably haven't seen in like three years in my basement. So I've been pulling out some of that old stuff and bringing it upstairs to do for you know, times to play or family game times um, to try different games. Maybe we tried when they were younger and they couldn't play them or weren't getting them. So we're really, we really like right now, uh, pull my finger. It's like a monkey that farts, his butt blows up and he like toots. I don't know. It's so funny to my kids. And then Sequence Junior, which actually is fun, I think, for the adults, too. I'll get kind of competitive with my husband on that one because you have to put these chips down on these animals and, like, get so many in a row. So that, that one's actually pretty fun. And kids can play it because it's just kind of matching uh, the animal card to the card on the board or the picture on the board. So look, that, look for that one if you want to buy a new game. It's called Sequence Junior. It's fun. 
Ah, okay. So what are you guys going to do for Easter? Let's chat about Easter for, oh, Allie thinks the YMCA isn't until next week. That might be correct. I have the dates on Stateline Kids, so please give that a check. They may not be doing it yet. I think, I know Rockford Public School is, but the Y may not be, so please, please check. Okay, let's chat about Easter. Um, I'm under the assumption that we're probably gonna be still in a similar situation for Easter. So I'm wondering what you guys are planning on doing. If you've thought about it, yeah, you know, no stress or no pressure if you haven't. Uh, for any ideas of sort of making Easter fun still at your house, if, if maybe you can't go out to eat or maybe you can't attend church in person or maybe you can't, attend an Easter egg hunt in person? Um, what kinds of things are you thinking of doing with your family to make it special and still have fun? So I was thinking, you know, we could do brunch at home and try to do a big, you know, sort of whatever the favorite parts of brunch are. Usually it's like the fruit for my kids and maybe the pan, like a pancake station. Um, and those types of things would be fun to do. Um, doing an egg hunt in the yard and or the house, which we usually do every year anyway, but maybe just doing a bigger scale one since we won't get to go do an outdoor one likely. Uh, dressing up anyways. One of my favorite parts of doing Easter is putting my kids in like very frilly little matching outfits and taking their picture while they still let me because they're small, they're five and two. So they still, you know, tolerate it. So I don't wanna miss out on those Easter pictures cause those are really, I really love those. So still probably gonna get them dressed up and you know, put them on the couch or outside if we've got nice weather and take some pictures. Uh, you, If you want to attend church, there are literally almost every church that I've seen is offering online services too. So you can definitely watch online. Some broadcast on our local news or our local uh, channels as well. So you can absolutely do that uh, if that's something that you would like to do on Easter day. And, oh yes, and then I'm having a virtual egg hunt on Stateline Kids, which will basically be looking around on the website. I'll give you clues and then you guys can click around and find like a picture of an egg with a number on it and then tell me where you found that egg and then you can go into a drawing for a prize. I'm trying to decide if it'll be a gift card or maybe like an Easter basket-y thing. So I'm still deciding on that, but there'll be a prize for somebody. Oh, Jennifer is gonna try a glow in the dark egg hunt. That sounds fun. You know, that sounds like a really good idea. That would be really fun. Um, is that with where you put, I've seen ones where they put those flameless candles that are battery operated in an egg and then close it and hide it around. I so you could probably do glow sticks too if you could get those little ones. That would be cool. Yeah, that would be really cool. Stephanie loves the matching frilly outfits too. Yes, those are the best. It's I I'm, I know there the day is going to come when they won't let me dress them in that stuff. So it's I got to just like eat it up right now cuz it just makes me so happy. Oh, Allie's asking if you have special eggs for it. Yes. Jennifer, yep, the tea lights thing. I have seen the tea lights thing, and I basically you just buy the eggs that open up, the plastic eggs, and then you can put either those flameless like tea light candles in there, or I've seen it where people can get these mini glow sticks, and you just crack them, put them in their closet, like put it in your yard. Oh, and there's also already light up eggs. Oh, there you go. So Google it, there's, there's already light up eggs. That's pretty cool. So then you don't have to do any work. You just toss it out there. Now here's my question. Would you also put like money or candy in the eggs or would it just be a glow thing? Because we do, what do you guys do in your eggs? We do like jelly beans in the eggs and then we have a gold egg for each kid that has like five a $5 bill in it. So they each get to find a gold egg and then they get to find the jelly bean eggs and just like eat it when they find it, <laughs> when they find it. So it's a wild, it's a wild morning. <laughs> Do you guys put anything inside your eggs? Let me know, type it up, I'd like to hear. But yeah, so I think Easter will still be fun. It'll still be exciting. It's just possibly gonna be a little different. I know the egg hunts are super fun. I don't know if you guys have attended them in the past, but 
I've been to some really cool egg hunts in the last couple years. Last year, I went to one in Beloit where it was a helicopter egg drop where they flew an helico a helicopter over a field and just dropped all these eggs. It was really very cool. Um, I think it was at Central Christian Church in Beloit, if I remember correctly. But it was, it was, I'd never seen anything like it. It was really awesome. So I am disappointed a little bit that there's no events happening. But I do think all of us moms and dads have the ability to totally make something really fun at home and your kids will not know the difference and they will still have a blast because it's a special, you know, day and you're doing something fun. So, you know, don't get too stressed about it. You don't need to think about it now if you don't want. I just like to think about things a little early because uh, it soothes me to plan. <laughs> it's just my personality. Shelby says, last year I did a few Legos in each egg and at the end she had to find a big egg with the Lego instructions to the kit. She really enjoyed that. That's a great idea. And that's a great non-food idea because I know sometimes people are wanting non-candy, non-food um, options for their eggs. That's a really good option for that. I could see doing that with hmm, maybe some other kinds of little toys. Um, not so much anymore, but my daughter was really into Zoom Zooms when she was two, those little tiny Disney, like, I don't know if they're even pronounced Zoom Zoom, but it's like T-S-U-M, T-S-U-M. Um, we put those in the eggs and then she opened them and that was a big hit at that time. Let's see, Jennifer says she'll probably try to find different size eggs so she could put all kinds of candy in them. That's a good idea too. And they do definitely have different size eggs because I've seen some that are like maybe that and then the standard whatever size egg. Our gold eggs are like a big egg that we put the $5 in. I don't, I don't know why they're so big, but yeah, there's definitely different size eggs out there. Mandy mostly does candy. I may do a couple Hot Wheels for my son, small value gift card for my teen step kids. Yeah, that's a good idea too. Gift cards, fun. You know, money's fun for them. The Hot Wheels are fun. My son's really into Hot Wheels currently. He would probably love that if there was Hot Wheels in every egg he found. <laughs> the, and yeah, that's that's a really good, that's a good idea. Ginger eggs, a few families. They hide 12 eggs in their yard, then run away. So we may have to wait and do them once we're able to be out and about again. That's really cute though. I love that. That's really fun. So you egg them and then they get to like have the fun surprise of going out and finding the eggs. That's really cute. That's adorable. Awesome. Okay, so, all right. Now, do you have any personal goals or plans for this time when you're home? So I have some friends where they're like, cleaning stuff and organizing. Do you have any types of things that you're working on as a plan? Are you gonna have like a giant garage sale in the summer once this is all done? Are you like remodeling your house or doing any cool things like that? I'm just wondering if you're doing any kind of stuff like that while this break's going on or have any big goals or big plans. Uh, me personally, I would like to clean my basement. I have a lot of kids stuff in there that's baby clothes, um, the toys, all that kind of stuff to prepare for some kind of large garage sale once everything was clear and we could have garage sales. I think that would be fun. And I do see some people doing some home improvement stuff and that seems like a great time to work on that too. And just do some things in your house and have some goals so that, you know, the time isn't just passing and you're feeling like, oh, I'm just like waiting for this to end. Then you're at least pursuing a goal you know, working towards something and hopefully having something that you accomplished at the end of this to be like, hey, well, you know, that wasn't the greatest, but you know what, I got my whole basement clean or I had this giant garage sale or we remodeled, you know, our bathroom or laundry room or whatever. Like that seems like something positive. Oh, another thing that I'd like to do is get a big garden going in my yard. I previously have um, bucket gardened in like big, bucket things and I want to go out in the yard, dig out a thing and make like a full vegetable garden this spring, summer so that we could have vegetables, more vegetables. So I find that my kids will actually try and eat them a lot more 
um, easily when we've grown it and we go look outside at it every day and then it's like, oh, you can eat it now. Do you want to eat it? And then it's like, oh, then all of a sudden they're eating a whole piece of romaine lettuce and they would not do that if it came out of a bag in the fridge. So it's kind of it's kind of fun and it's not that hard. I'm not a very green thumb person. It's not that hard to do. All right, let's see what kind of projects you guys are doing. Shelby is finishing painting the upstairs trim that they started two over two, <laughs> over two years ago. I have zero excuses not to finish it. Yeah, I hear you. We've got some, <laughs> we've got some lingering projects over here that could probably get completed during this time for sure. But that seems like the perfect time to work on this kind of stuff. Like, you really can't go anywhere. Might as well get done what you haven't gotten done, especially if you already have the materials. Like many of us have things in the basement or somewhere in a storage that we have bought to do this project at some time and then we never get to the project and the stuff's just sitting there. So it's like, yeah, it's a good time to do it. Okay, Allie is going to organize the house and garage and clean her neglected yard. Yeah, my yard is, my yard needs help as well, Allie. Definitely, we've got a couple dead trees that we're trying to figure out what to do with as well or if we want to get them cut down. Yeah, so to I totally hear you on the yard for sure. Shannon says, nope, potty training takes all my extra attention. Yeah, <laughs> I hear you on that one. Also, the things I wanted to, to get done involve the computer and my hubby is working from home. Yes, that makes sense. So yeah, do you have any other kinds of like, you know, personal goals that could be business related? I was trying to convince one of my friends here that she should start a virtual party planning business because she is an awesome party planner, Sam. So <laughs> I, you know, I definitely think you could do something like that too, if you're interested where, you know, you could, it, it may be a good time to start that hobby or start that thing that you wanted to do, or even like the Duolingo thing that we mentioned earlier for the kids. Do you want to learn a language? Uh, you might want to check that out, especially because right now all the libraries, but I know in particular Rockford Public Library has Rosetta Stone that you can do for free. And most of the libraries have different resources that they're, they're free all the time, but now they're opening up maybe more or they're just uh, bringing attention to them that you can do in your house, you know, whenever in your spare time. So you could come out of this being like, oh, you know, yeah, now I speak Spanish. Hey, I mean, that's that's pretty useful. Okay, Samantha says she's organizing all her photos and ordering new prints for my frames. I need to address my my storeroom though, garage sale prepping. Yes, that's a great idea too. Those photo books or photo albums, that is an awesome idea to get some new prints of your pictures while you're home to just also look through and remember fun times that you've had and different things that you enjoyed doing as a family. And that can probably boost your mood too. While you're sitting at home, you know, you can just say, oh, like, look, we went to the beach. That was beautiful. Or we did this, or we had a fun family day over here. And then you feel a little bit, you know, a little bit of joy from your previous experiences that you've had. I love that. And I totally need to do that because in the room we're even in, I've got some photos and the most recent one of my son, he's like 10 months old, like, poor second child that he's almost three and there are very few photos of him anywhere. He, it looks like he does not exist. So I definitely need to uh, up my game with that too. So that's a great idea. Okay, Mandy has been spring cleaning and purging stuff we don't need to reuse anymore and working on different projects for my business that I previously been put to the side. That's great, Mandy. That is 100% what I do in my downtime and what I've done with this time because for me, being productive and active is calming. It, it helps keep me sane and less stressed. If I didn't have a project to work on, um, and typically mine are just business related as with either state line kids or I have a digital marketing agency I've done from home for five years, I, if I'm not working on something like that, then sometimes I'll watch too much of the news or I'll think about things too much or I'll get worried about things. So I find that if I channel my anxiety into work, then it it all seems to be a little bit better. So I hear you on that with working on the projects that you've put aside. And it's a good time to do that. Like, have, you know, do you wanna write a book? Do you wanna 
you know, whatever you might want to do. This, this is definitely the time where you've got a little more time open to possibly work on that in the evening or, you know, whatever weekends. Allie would love to refinish her, her, oh, buffet. Yeah. That's been sitting in the garage for years. Oh, very cool. Yes. Refinishing furniture looks really cool. I've never done it, but it looks fun and people do a beautiful job on stuff. It's really impressive. Okay. So, oh, that brings me to another question. Are you a stress cleaner? Do you, do you clean when you're stressed? I wish I was a stress cleaner. I'm not. I'm more, more of a stress lounger, <laughs> but <laughs> I know some people are stress cleaners and they're just getting all sorts of stuff done while this is happening so that their, you know, their house is like spick and span, which that's awesome. And that's a good way to get some of your, you know, stress or energy out. Okay. And then that brings me to my last question for you guys. What is your favorite way to get your mind off of what's happening in the world? So just your, your mindless thing that you like to do. So one thing that I like to do that I want to show you guys is I have this adult coloring book and I really like these and I will work on this like really detailed picture with colored pencils and it, it literally puts me in the zone. Like I have to concentrate so hard to color everything properly because it's so small see all those like tiny things that I feel like it's a really good stress reliever because I'm just doing it and I'll just kind of, you know, zone out and be totally calm. I know people do puzzles as well. I read books. I read a good amount of books in the evening. I like to read fiction, um, binge watching TV. I've heard this Tiger King show is absolutely nuts. I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> Um, I'm watching the Little Fires Everywhere right now on Hulu. It's really good. I'm also reading that book at the same time, which I'd pro I probably would have read the book first if I could do it over, but both are super good. So check those out if you are interested in seeing something new. Oh, another thing that I like to do that maybe you guys would enjoy is looking at properties on Zillow. This is like one of my favorite things to do. Um, my ultimate dream is to have a farmette. So I like to look at well, farm properties, but really any property I will look at. So that to me is very soothing, <laughs> soothing and calming too, to just like click through other people's houses. It's just really fun. So that's just something I like to do to sort of zone out and forget my troubles. Oh yes, and for reading, if you enjoy reading as well, um, even though the libraries are closed, their online apps are still going. So it, check with whatever library is in the town you live in and look on their website. They will either have Hoopla, Libby, or Overdrive, or all three, or some of them. Um, they all have audiobooks and ebooks that you can check out. And there's some good stuff on there. I've found a lot of good things to read. Hoopla, I think, is the best. So if your library has that, like, download that one immediately. And then I'd say Libby has probably the second amount of the most variety and then Overdrive is third, but they're all, they're all good. So check those out in case, you know, you want to be reading or listening to audiobooks. Also podcasts, if you like podcasts, there's a ton of good podcasts out there. Um, I like true crime podcasts, so I listen to a lot of those. Uh, I also really like happier. It's with Gretchen Rubin. They talk about just kind of different things that you could do to be happier. It's like a little bit happier in your life. And they're just kind of useful, fun podcast episodes. Okay, let's see. Man Mandy said she thinks her employees will wish this quarantine never happened. <laughs> yeah, probably like you're getting extra productive and they're probably like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. I hear ya. Okay, I've got another request to watch Tiger King. I know, literally, everybody's telling me to watch this. It, it sounds like it's hilarious and nuts, and I'm sure I will watch it because I inevitably end up watching like all the crazy shows. I watched Love Is Blind. I'm 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 on it, so I'm sure I will watch it soon. 
Shannon likes to watch episodes of her favorite shows. It's soothing to watch something I already know what's going to happen. I totally agree. That's what is your favorite soothing show to watch? If I just am sort of feeling bleh, I put on The Office because I think it's funny no matter what. It always makes me laugh. And it's just kind of like a nice, it's like a, it's like putting on a, like a warm blanket. Like you're just like, mm, I know what this is. Like it's, it's great. It's great. So yeah, I totally, I totally get what you're saying there. Jennifer loves word searches in Sudoku. Yeah. Did I say Sudoku right? I'm not sure. I think that's how you say it. I feel like that is kind of hard, but yes, props to you, Jennifer, because those are like a thinking, a thinking game. I like to turn the brain like totally off, <laughs> but props to you for doing the, uh, the thinking games. Shelby's glad she's not the only one who looks at Zillow. Yes, really that is, it, it's, I get the alerts too. So I see the houses like immediately when they come in and I'm looking at them because I don't, it's just fun to me. I don't know. We don't have any intention of moving any time soon, but it's just enjoyable. And, and Samantha loves to binge shows and read. Yeah, me too. Great. <laughs> well, I hope that this was a fun chat with you guys. I had a great time. I hope you guys had fun and maybe felt a little bit less isolated during this time. You know, I'm here as Stateline Kids to be a resource to you and help with whatever I can in terms of coming up with ideas, sharing things that I see, giving information that you may need. I try to do my best to get all that stuff to you guys so that every, you know, so that this stage could be a little bit easier and so that you don't feel alone because you're not. We're all we're all here doing this together and do as much as you can and don't feel pressured by what everyone else is doing because you're doing the best you can. Everyone is every day. And as a parent, I feel that we are in a doubly difficult situation during this type of event because we have to not only process it for ourselves, but we have to help our children process it and try to make this a, try to try to make this as positive as a thing as we can. So that's difficult. I mean, that is, that's tough. We, we have a lot of pressure on us as parents during this time. So please know I'm here for you. If you ever have any ideas of things you would like to see on Stateline Kids, please feel free to DM me, uh, email me, or post a comment on one of the posts that I have on Facebook. I will see it um, and I will respond to you and you know, do whatever I can. So thank you for joining me. I had fun. I hope you enjoyed this chat and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.